welcome back to Up The Villa podcast. This is our opposition preview for West Ham United v Aston Villa. Jake is back on the channel. How you doing, mate? Not bad. Uh, Luke, thank you very much indeed for having me back on. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Thank you. And the first question I'm going to ask you is, what's going on with David Moyes? Oh, it's the million dollar question that everybody is chucking at West Ham fans over the last couple of months. And, uh, and look, I know you asked me that relatively early in this so <laughs> for the first time actually been asked this question about five minutes ago I had a little I had, had a had a sort of little look through the stats and because I want to I want to try and explain the opinions of the West Ham uh, fans and we've had a barrage over the last couple of months from media saying we can't do this we can't want David Moyes to leave West Ham and my stance is is clear on him I don't think you know he won't get sacked before the end of the season but I think it's best for all parties if Moyes uh, departs at the end of the season uh, that's my opinion uh, obviously if we go and win the Europa League which I don't think we will but if we do uh, then obviously that changes um, but Look, we turned the calendar year and and to be fair, when we played you at Villa Park, that was the sort of start of our first uh, really dreadful run of form this season. And then uh, we picked things up a little bit. We picked up some brilliant results in December uh, and we played quite well. And then the calendar year turned and we had a winless streak of eight. We didn't win in eight. We didn't win in two months uh, in all competitions. And even as I sit here today, uh, we've won three out of the last 13 in all competitions since the turn uh, of the calendar year. It's not been great. Uh, now, look, we play a style of football that when it works, it's brilliant. When it when it doesn't work, it's tedious. And we've had more of that uh, over the last couple of months. And look, there was, I think, the winning the Conference League last year saved Moyes massively because there was, I'd say, a firm 75-80% of the fan base uh, that wanted to see him leave at the end of the season. The Conference League win halted that, of course, and we had to give him this season, um, which, which I think was right. We started well. We played you a lot, got smacked, and, we, and it's all gone downhill pretty much since then. And <laughs> and and the thing with Moyes is is it's just it's just a style of football, and we can see you know we have some real real good quality um, in that team, and it showed uh, yesterday uh, in our Europa League game, and it actually shows when we go for it. The tactics are a big big issue because we've we've set up on too many occasions this season uh, for the point. We did that at your place. We've done it against so many so many teams, and it's backfired on us massively. You know we had an absolute embarrassment against Arsenal back in February. That was that was a real low moment, and I'd say. There was a big shift then to about 90, 92 or 3% of the fan base wanted Moyes uh, to leave. It just seems like the tangible option. And, and look, the media narrative has been driven in terms of Moyes. Um, you know, you've got your quarterfinals, you've been in Europe, you're, you're in seventh, you were sixth, you won the Conference League. And they've reeled all of those out. And look, I, I understand it. From the outside looking in, it looks like we are getting a bit too big for our boots. But with the quality that we see in that squad, because, uh, you know, we uh, as, as West Ham fans, we watch this week in, week out. The quality there uh, can be improved. Um, but, I mean, Kudus, Paqueta, Bowen, some sensational, you know, you won't find too many better front threes in the league uh, than that. And they're not getting utilised to the best of their ability at the moment. And that's the infuriating part of West Ham fans and it is the majority of the away following and um, and the majority of the fan base that will prefer him just to depart at the end of the season and say thank you David you've done a fantastic job but we want a different style of football and a new philosophy and a, and a direction forward as a football club because we have a base of players there and I think just the feeling is if we continue with Moyes then that base of players are going to go. Mm. Yeah because I mean I, I, I see two ways really I, I see it as from the outside so you know I'm a Villa yeah. fan looking yeah. in and you look at sort of seventh place you look at you know, going well in Europe you look at the quarterfinals and you think do you know what you're all right and then I guess uh, if you're a fan you know you do want to see possibly a better brand of football and I look at that game that we've got coming up at the weekend we'll get onto it in more detail in a minute and you know I, I feel like I'm trying to get in your head of how you're probably thinking. Yeah. You're thinking Thursday was brilliant. We smashed that team. But you, I imagine you know what Moyes is going to do at home on Sunday against Villa. Yeah. And it's going to be more defensive. And he's going to probably play into Villa's hands a little bit and let us have more of the ball. Is that sort of the general vibe of, of how it goes? Because, you know, like you said earlier, you do have some good results and then... 
you then have like some, you know, the Burnley one, and you, you know, from a, a Villa fan, when I watch you, I look at you and I think, God, you'll beat Burnley today, and then you struggle against Burnley. So I can see your frustration, but then my other question for you is like, what happens if you got someone in and it didn't work out? Hmm. Yeah, see, yeah. See, that's what everyone's put back to us, and it's sort of the it's weighing up whether you want to play crap football and win or play good football and lose. And and the West Ham fans' response as a whole has been, why can't we have both? Why can't we play good yeah. football and win? And look, it's not as yeah. simple as that. Um, you know, it's not as simple as that at all. And and I think just the urge. And I mean, to be fair, the sad reality of it was not many fans were shocked that we didn't beat Burnley. We made them look like Barcelona in the first half and Burnley have been awful this season. No disrespect to them. They haven't been fantastic at all. And we made them look good uh, in the first 45. And it's just another it's it's another knock on effect of what's been happening. And look, if we were to bring in an expansive style of um, football, um, you know, playing manager, and it didn't work, then I don't know. <laughs> if I'm if I'm totally honest, I don't know. But I just feel that the fan base in the club just needs a little bit of a refresh. And if it doesn't work out then we've got to cross that bridge when we come to it. But we just want that bit of ambition to push on further because I think we're better than some of the big six. I think you're better than some of the big six. And I think uh, I always admire when clubs from the other 14 push those uh, boundaries. And with Chelsea dwindling at the top half of the bottom, uh, at, the bo- at the top of the bottom half, which is mildly amusing, um, this is no better opportunity for clubs like Villa and clubs like West Ham to push on. And we can see an opportunity there because there is an opportunity at the moment with how those teams are going. An expansive manager is what we want. If it doesn't work out, then we'll have to cross that bridge. You know, I haven't actually thought of that, to be totally honest. Mm -hmm. But it's just a refresh that's needed because the fan base have become drained of it, to be honest. Mm. So I guess I'm going to ask you how you play. I kind of want to know how you play on both variations then yeah. of, of like the good and the bad. I, mm. I was at, at the Villa on Thursday night and you guys were sort of on the TVs while we were playing and mm. Kudus, halfway line, explosive. I was like, yeah. what's going on here? Like, you know, the goals and, and we scored goals. So this mm. game's got nil-nil written all over it. <laughs> but, um, so talk to me about... How you do play then when, when it works well? What what do you do that sort of is sort of like the big impact? When it works well, you we've got we've got to have a slice of luck to start with for it to work. Um, and teams have got to play into our hands. It's not about particularly how we play because we play the same every week. We're going to give you the ball. We're going to give you as much of the ball as you want. Um, and we're going to ask you. We're going to track the ball and say break us down. That's what we'll do. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't do that on Thursday against Freiburg to my complete and utter amazement. Uh, the difference there was you know we've been starting uh, three in midfield and then the front three of Kudus, Paqueta and Bowen. Moyes identified that Freiburg weren't very good. Uh, in the first leg which they weren't and we just got a little bit complacent towards the end and uh, fell a goal behind and there was never too many issues that we were um, going to lose in the second leg so to my utter amazement we started Antonio as well which gave us that outlet up front Jared Bowen has been playing centrally uh, due to Antonio's absence uh, but Antonio's come back into the side almost as a super sub in the last few games but he started him from the uh, from the start on Thursday and he was just that outlet and it allowed Bowen to move back out to the right hand side everything flew a bit more. I want us to start the exact same way. I want us to do and put that same lineup out uh, on Sunday against you boys. Can I see it? Mm, probably not. Uh, I can see Moyes reverting back to what he does in the league. It's going to be um, a sort of 4-3-3 formation I'm expecting. I'm expecting Will Prowse to come back into midfield and has to be a bit more compact, chuck you the ball and go break us down and we'll try and do you with Kudus, Bowen and Paquette on the counter-attack. Yeah, I've been impressed with Alvarez. Um, really yeah. good player, really, really like him. Bowen is obviously always a threat and uh, he's a big player for you guys. So who would you say has been your best player this season? That's a difficult question because there's there's a, there's a best player and then there's the most important player. Um, the best player has been... Kudus, I'd say. Kudus or Bowen, I can't give it to one of them. They, you know, they, they've both been sensational in what they've done. The most important player you've mentioned there is Edson Alvarez. He's the glue to the midfield. He is our Declan Rice replacement and he's done the job uh, superbly this season. You know, he struggled a little bit at the start to get up to the pace of the Premier League after joining from Ajax in the summer. But 
from I'd say September, October time, he has been the glue. And when you remove him, we fall apart. And you know that's been West Ham fans' concern because we're because we're without him in the first leg uh, of the Europa League quarter final next month. So that there, there, there's just a bit of apprehension when he's not there. He is so important. He is that Declan Rice player that holds everything together. And even against Freiburg, he was pushing forward as well and threatening uh, in the offensive areas. Kudus and Bowen have been brilliant going forward, but um, Alvarez has been so essential and so important um, to us holding things together and structurally keeping us as a team. He's been sensational. Yeah, when when we saw Grealish, mm. it took me... It took me for him to win trophies for me to get over it. So when I saw him lift something, I was like, right, he's done it now. I'm over it. Are you over Declan Rice yet? Or is it still is it still raw? I don't know. Over it. I mean, when I see him play for Arsenal, I turn my nose. And when I see him score at Arsenal, I turn the TV off. Uh, so I suppose you could say that I'm not over it. Now, look. It was always going to happen. And listen, we discussed this before. It was always going to happen this summer or last summer it was now. Uh, he was sold and look, the way it happened didn't please West Ham fans. So I don't think there'll ever be a complete, um, you know, a complete area of fair enough with him. If he'd have gone to City and won trophies, there'd have been a little bit more understanding there. Arsenal aren't a club that's particularly liked in East London uh, from our perspective. And there's, the, yeah, there's still that simmering anger there uh, from a certain section of the fan base. I suppose I could involve myself in that, that the way it all happened. And yeah, it's not, it's not been completely forgotten about. <laughs> uh, and that's why that result against Arsenal in February just hurt that bit more. Yeah, you did knock him out of the cup, though, didn't you? Did you? Oh, did we, you? oh we beat him in the cup. We beat him at their place two 0 Yeah, West gave away a penalty. It was so that, yeah, so, yeah. So that that must have felt a bit better. But oh, yeah. honestly, if he wins a trophy, you I think you'll feel better because you'll have just closed that door. Then, um, so you're still going well in the Europa League. You got the big boys. You you've got you've got the story yeah. of German football <laughs> to play. Uh, and, and that does kind of feel like it's going to be Alonso and Klopp eventually in the final. That, it just feels like <clears> it's written. So how, how do you feel about that? Do you, do you think you can do it? Because they, they did struggle in that in their, their last game. Um, and, you know, you've got that sort of experience of, of winning a European trophy now. So uh, how have you been feeling playing in Europe? Yeah, it's been, I mean, I'm going to sound really arrogant and say it's just been normal service, which is quite bizarre <laughs> to say we've, you know, we've come, uh, we've become accustomed to it. And I think you probably will after, uh, after a couple of years, you know, um, I think we did you a favour last night actually by beating a German side with the whole coefficient. So you might get that fifth spot in the Champions League. I, I do hope it helps you, not Spurs, because if we've given yeah. Spurs Champions League <laughs> football, then we're not going to be best pleased. But, um, but it, it's become normal service for West Ham and there will become a time where it doesn't happen and we've become so, um, you know, reliant on it. And I mean, I'm sure you boys are the same. There's been that just excitement on social media of booking those flights to go. I mean, you've got Leo, is it? I saw. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, you know, we've uh, been booking flights to uh, Leverkusen as a fan base and, and look, can we do it? Yes. Will we do it? I don't know. Look, we're without Alvarez in the first leg, which is a huge miss. If we can keep them at arm's length or keep them in the tie, we're home in the second leg, which is just so important. Being home in that second leg um, is, you know, is the better way to do it with your home support, trying to rally you on uh, in that second leg. That's where I'm holding my confidence. Look, Quebec pushed them. You know, they were beating them in the first leg and the yeah. second leg in different occasions, Quebec of Azerbaijan. So, look, they aren't completely invincible. Somebody's got to beat them, and I hope it's us. Yeah, definitely. I, I hope you do it. It's just good to see, you know, it, it, English teams doing well in Europe, um, if, even Champions League, to be fair, even though I don't like some of them teams. It's just, I just think it's good for English football. So yeah. what have you made of Villa then since we've we've last spoke? Yeah, I've been, yeah, I've been impressed. And, you know, there was that, there was that period, I don't know where it was, where you beat City and Arsenal inside a week and everybody was like, and to be fair, you were all dreaming a little bit and going, can we? <laughs> Can we? Uh, and yeah. fair play to you. Uh, <laughs> honestly, if it means there's four Champions League spaces and you get in there over Spurs, I'll be absolutely buzzing for you. Um, look, now, look, I mentioned it earlier. If uh, I like any club that can go and just push that big six and uh, and break the mould, which you are going to do undoubtedly this season, um, 
fair play to you. And Unai Emery is a fantastic manager. Uh, we all know that. You've had a couple of blips, um, but who hasn't? Who won't? Mm. City have had a couple of blips. Yeah. Uh, Liverpool will have at some point. And look, um, I think you've done. I think you've done brilliantly. Look, a couple of weeks of dreaming for the title. I don't blame you at <laughs> all. And look, to sit to sit here now, you're still not oh, a million miles away from I it. I was all over it. I was. I was thinking we we're going to win the league after we oh, beat I Arsenal. Blame, <laughs> I don't blame you. No, I don't blame you at all. Uh, we were singing we we're going to win the league in August when we were top yeah. of the league. I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, that, that's the, the thing about being a football fan, and and the thing about when you create, you know, football content is. You have to just enjoy it. You have to yeah. en en enjoy the ride and just, just yeah, just enjoy it as much as you can. So, a big game on Sunday then. Mm -hmm. uh, last week, we got absolutely battered against Spurs and we played in Europe. And it was the first time that I felt that we'd played in Europe the game yeah. before Spurs. Like, ever since we've been playing in Europe, we've been, very, we've been really good after a European game. And we just look really leggy. So both teams will have played in Europe. So we've got no excuses. We've both played 90 minutes on, on Thursday. You guys, you know, you play your fast and direct, transitional, counter-attacking football. Villa, very possession-based football. How do you see the game going then? Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I'm, uh, I do a... I, I do a Premier League Roundup show on my uh, channel and I've got a Villa fan that comes on every week and we were discussing last week the importance of the next fortnight where you had uh, the two games in Europe and the Spurs game and that didn't go to plan uh, for you last weekend and and look we we as a fan base have warned the Brightons and the Villas about there will be this European hangover and it sounds like you uh, received that I didn't have too many uh, qualms but you getting through uh, too far in the conference I thought you'd get um you know, I still think you'll get through uh, to at least the semis. But this game, um, yeah, I'm I'm not sure. I think, of course, it's massively dependent on on how Moy sets up. If he sets up like he did on Thursday, then I'm going to give us uh, a decent chance. But I mean, I'm just looking at the Premier League table now, and Villa have almost gone under the radar a little bit. They're just you know, seven points off uh, Man City. And I mean, if I just told you in October you'll be seven points off a of Man City in the middle of March, you'd be like, well, I would take that. We must be up there uh, and in the mixer, and you are. And um, and Villa are a club that can't be underestimated, and Moy certainly won't be underestimating that as I mentioned earlier we'll chuck you the ball and say come and score goals and uh, if you do then our game plan will have to change but we'll, we will try and frustrate you and then use that quality that we do have in the likes of Kudus and Bowen and Paqueta uh, in the final third and look it won't be pretty uh, by any stretch. None of our matches are particularly pretty, uh, putting aside Thursday night, which was an anomaly. Uh, listen, I'd love for that to happen again. I think it'll be tight. I don't think it'll be a walkover either way because I think we've got that bit of a bounce from Thursday. You've got that bit of a bounce from Thursday. You'll be wanting to bounce back in the Premier League after uh, a disappointing result last weekend. I don't think there'll be too much European hangover there from either side, to be honest, played at home and, and won, which helps. Uh, so I think it'll be tight. I don't think there'll be a hell of a lot in it. Um, that's me trying to be as optimistic as I possibly can be. <laughs> no, it's, it's fair. To be fair, I, I do think it's going to be a draw. I've just got, I've just got a funny feeling that it's going to be a draw. Um, I don't think it's going to be nil nil. I'll, I'll probably go like a one one. Um, but mm. yeah, that, that's what I'd probably go with. Anyway, Jake, thank you for coming on the channel. Um, and I'll tag your channel in the title and in the description of the video as well. So uh, all the best for the rest of the season. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And I've got one question for you, uh, which yeah. I've been asking Villa fans. Would you prefer to qualify for Champions League or win the Conference oh. League? Champions League. Oh, Champions you've done League. it. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> because for me, right, I'll, I'll explain my answer. I feel like, for me, personally, the, the decision based on winning a trophy is my personal gain. Do you know what I mean? Like, seeing us win a trophy... For the better of our football club, it's Champions League revenue, yeah, like commercial yeah. revenue. So I'm I'm taking my personal view off and thinking what's best for the football club. So, yeah, and, I, yeah. I want well, both, but yeah. you've asked me one or the other. So <laughs> I think uh, you can do go. both. And uh, and yeah, I do. I do hope you do both as well. Even though it will take a little glint off of us winning it last year. <laughs> I hope you win it and I hope you get Champions League. Cause, well, to uh, be yeah. fair, if if... if both clubs have won it, you know, it, yeah. it, it's it's our trophy. Exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. It's a claret and blue trophy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. And then 
I don't, know, I don't think another Claret and Blue Premier League team can do it, can they? Burnley aren't Burnley good enough, definitely so. won't be doing it. Yeah, so, yeah, probably, I don't know, it'll be then. But um, yeah, cheers, mate, and I'll speak no, to thanks. you soon. Thanks, Luke, cheers.